Early spring is one of the best times to target trophy pike. When fish are laid up in the bays, you have a few options on where to look for them, as well as how to fish for them. Dean and Tony Capra employ some unique methods to catch some great Canadian pike in shallow bays. <laughs> I'm gonna get this guy. I'm gonna land this one, Tom. It's another one of the big monsters. I have to be really careful with these guys. This is a, another big one. Oh. Look at that one. <laughs> another horse. This fish came out of the loop pass. I get him, get him back in there. Look at the size of that guy. I'm gonna let him go. You know, one of the things with these huge fish like this, I'm gonna just let this guy go. One of the things that we're doing here today to make this a lot more fun is we're using bass type equipment. I'm talking a regular flipping stick, stuff that you'd use for fishing bass. I got a high speed Shimano reel, six to one retrieve. I got 25 pound big game. We're using 12 inch wire leaders with a five odd hook. Now what's happening here is these fish are in these pads. We've got to make extremely long casts. You need that heavy line. You need the long rod to pick up the line and pick up the line when you set the hook. In spring, when main lake temperatures are cold, pike utilize shallow bays and the warmer water they contain to help metabolize their food. Fish will feed wherever the closest food source is and then return to the warmer bays to jumpstart their digestive systems. Key spots to fish include dark mud bottom bays that warm more quickly than surrounding waters and bays with prevailing winds blowing into them for any length of time. The warmer surface water stacks up in these bays, attracting pike. Later in the year, when main lake temperatures are warmer, pike will be located in more traditional spots, like saddles between islands, around humps or points, and ambush points around vegetation. You know, it's really crucial, especially when you've got the right light, like what we're dealing with right now, is to get up as high as possible with Polaroid glasses, and it allows you to cover a lot more territory to find these fish. And so what we're doing right now is Dean is literally driving the boat, and I'm up here on the high perch, and we're looking for the fish. We might cover two miles of area until we find an area that has some concentration of fish. Once you do that, shut the motor off and either use an electric trolling motor or a paddle for a real stealth presentation into these areas. Oh, yeah. I got him. This is a big a one. A real big, big one. one. Oh. Big one. This is a big one. Look oh. at the size of this fish. This is a big one. Ooh, look at this fish, Dino. <laughs> look at the size of this dude. <laughs> he looks like a muskie. Ooh, here we go. Boy, the real thing. This fish still hasn't did a, a major run yet. There he is. Boy, look at the head on that guy. Where are you going? He's departing on me. All right, come on back. When them fish want to go, especially on these bigger size fish like this, what I like to do is immediately loosen up my drag. So that fish, once you've got them hooked, it's pretty tough to lose them. And um, what you want to do is just loosen up that drag. <laughs> Loosen that drag up so that fish can roll. Okay, I'm gonna attempt to grab this fish. Oh. Okay. 
gonna set my spool on on free spool in case he decides to take off. Just look at the size of oh, this fish. Is that incredible or what? Holy buckets. That's gotta be one of the biggest northern pike I've ever caught. Folks, I'm telling you, this fishing can be phenomenal. When you get into the back ends of these bays in the springtime like this, really the key to catching them is to find them first visually and then get on them with a real neutral, slow falling bait. Okay, and, and it, it, it's just incredible. This fish is huge. I'm gonna get this guy back in the water so he can swim for another day. Woo!